This show for us, for the museum, and for the Cape Verdean Advisory Committee at the museum, was a chance for us to pay tribute to Judge George Layton, who passed away in 2018. At first, when he passed away, we decided we wanted to do something big, and so we put a panel in our permanent Cape Verdean Maritime Gallery to him that told a little bit about his life and his accomplishments. But as time went on, we wanted to do something bigger in his honor. So with Cape Verdean Recognition Week approaching, I had a tiny seed of an idea that we should invite local artists to submit work in honor of Judge George Layton and we'd have an exhibit on his behalf or in his honor. So we put out a call for artists. We figured it would be a pretty small show. I think we limited the number of submissions or the number of submissions we'd accept to 14 because we had a very small gallery space, but we wanted Cape Verdean artists, local Cape Verdean artists, to be able to showcase their work and also to demonstrate that there are artists of color, there are Cape Verdean artists in the city. What ended up happening was we got so many high quality, and, and when I say high quality, I mean museum quality pieces, that we ended up accepting 29 different pieces of art from 18 different artists. And so uh, those 29 pieces are what is represented in this gallery. So this is a representation, an artistic representation of a pano cloth, which is a traditional Cape Verdean cloth. It is used for everything from carrying babies to uh, it was once used for currency in times of scarcity. This is a modern representation of the pano cloth called My Ocean by Sandra Santos. And it has, it's made using carpet fibers and it has coral and shell and beads um, really to express her love of the ocean and what the ocean means to her. Next to it, we have a wrap in denim by designer June Cruz. When she submitted this piece, it had not yet been completed. She submitted a sketch for what she would like to design. And we were blown away by the sketch, but when she brought in the actual piece, we were even more blown away. Because really, if you look at this piece, it's modeled after a traditional pano cloth, but it's made from denim. And so it very much represents the Cape Verdean American experience with the combination of the pano cloth and denim. Recently, June was here with a model, uh, modeling this piece in our galleries because she thought this was the perfect place to photograph this piece uh, for her portfolio. These things, like this, they just sort of happen. <laughs> you know, she called and said, do you think the museum would let me come and, and photograph with a model for my portfolio? And so we, you know, we absolutely, it fit within our mission statement and, and she was an artist who was kind enough to loan us this piece. I should mention everything in this gallery is loaned by a local artist. And so we get the benefit of having this great exhibit and we hope that, you know, th the benefit to them is that the New Bedford community and people visiting the museum from around the world get to see their art and get to see representations of the Cape Verdean experience. This piece is called Nos Terra by Eva Brito, who also submitted poetry. This piece is representative of her poem. It's an expression of her poem, which contains the Contra de Ojo, which is the Cape Verdean Evil Eye Ward. On the night of the opening reception, we had two poets that we accepted. Both of them read at the opening. And when we accepted the poems, we loved them because they were very expressive of the Cape Verdean American experience. They were the Cape Verdean voice. Um, but watching them being performed was a whole other uh, experience. This is one of two pieces that we accepted by artist Wanda Medina, who is a multimedia artist. This piece is called View of Brava. And what she's representing here is the view of Brava from the ocean, the beautiful mountains and moonlight in the background. Um, this piece is on burlap and contains burlap and paint and some other materials. It's a really, really beautiful piece. So in this case, we have two different things. Uh, we have actual pano cloth. So previously we looked at Sandra Santos's 
uh, adaptation of a pano cloth in her work, My Ocean. These are pano cloths from Cape Verde, which were loaned to us for this exhibit by Carl Cruz. Next to the pano cloth is a sculpture by Providence artist Christian Gonsalves called Diaspora. And it is representative of his ancestors' journey across the ocean. This painting is by Dr. Susan Costa. It's called Fetching Water, Sal Vicente. This is a pretty common scene uh, near the fish market on Sal Vicente, which is one of the islands in Cape Verde. That piece is by artist Maurice Costa from Roxbury. The museum actually owns another one of his pieces. Interestingly enough, he called me uh, about a month after the call for artists went out and, and was asking about it. And I asked him if he realized that we were using his piece that we owned to advertise the show. And he said, no, I haven't seen the call for artists. I just heard about it through word of mouth. And so he submitted two pieces. This one is called The Musician of Mato Grande on Brava. He's holding a violin. Uh, music is very, very important in both Cape Verde and in the Cape Verdean American community here. This piece is called Diaspora and History of the Cape Verde Islands, and it's a retrospective on the history of Cape Verde. We did accept multiple pieces from some artists. This piece is the second piece we accepted by the artist Wanda Medina. It's called Fogo's Fire. Fogo is an island on Cape Verde that is named Fogo because it has an active volcano. And so she is expressing uh, in this picture her vision of Fogo's fire. The last major eruption on the island was 2012 and I believe about a thousand people were displaced. Um, and so it is very much still an, an active volcano. These two pieces were done by the artist Anita Pina Robinson. We actually accepted three pieces from her. She is primarily a sculptor, but also works in watercolor. These two pieces, one with an older woman, one with a younger woman. The first on the left is called Memories. The uh, painting on the right is called Attitude. This poem, titled Biting My Mother's Tongue, is by Rihanna Grace. It's a beautiful poem about the experience of being a third generation Cape Verdean woman. The title is meant to be sort of tongue in cheek, no pun intended, but um, you know, when you're biting your tongue, you're holding back from saying something you wanna say. Your mother tongue is your language. And so within this poem, she expresses the struggle of not knowing your mother's tongue, not knowing your mother's language. And again, she performed this the night of the opening reception and, and everyone was just emotionally affected by the words of her poem. Well, I should also say, um, not only did we not expect to get as many submissions as we got, but this was my first time doing something like this, so many lessons were learned in the process of, of putting this exhibit together. This is a case that has art that speaks to the Cape Verdean immigrant experience, or the immigrant experience in general. To the left is a piece by California artist Miggy Wong, titled Relax Your Fingers, Everything Will Be All Right Too. Miggy is the only artist in the show that is not of Cape Verdean descent, but we felt her piece spoke so well to the anxieties of immigration that we included it in this show. In the middle of the case is the book, 
The Making of the Cape Verdean by Manuel E. Costa Sr., edited by his daughter Jeannie Costa, which also speaks to the experience of newly immigrated Cape Verdeans into New Bedford. Finally, we have the novel Chiquinho, a novel of Cabo Verde written by Baltazar Lopes. This novel is considered the quintessential Cape Verdean novel. It was written by Baltazar Lopes, but the English translation was done in 2018 by Carlos Almeida and Isabel Fail Rodericks. This novel speaks to the Cape Verdean need to immigrate to make a living and escape harsh conditions. The reason it was significant to this show is at the end of the novel, Chiquinho finds his way to New Bedford, where his father immigrated many years prior. This photograph is one of three we accepted from the photographer Frank Pina, who is the brother of artist Anita Pina Robinson, uh, whose work we also accepted. Two of his photographs are of Judge Layton. This one is Judge Layton sitting in a rocking chair that at that point had been in his family for over a hundred years. This documentary by documentary filmmaker Anne Marie Lopes was submitted, it was one of the first things that was submitted uh, when we did the call for artists. And being a curator, I realized that people would not stand and watch an hour long documentary. So I asked Anne Marie, if she could cut it down to eight to 10 minutes. Um, and I'm glad that that didn't work out. Uh, she said she would have a difficult time doing that. So we came up with an alternate plan of creating eight three to five minute segments or chapters of his life so that those who wanted to could look at specific areas of his life, his early years, his civil rights record, um, him speaking to a high school, and um, so you could watch one or two of those or you could watch all of them, um, but it really captures his life in total. Artist Glanza Ramos submitted his song Solera de Navida to reflect his experience with singer Cesaria Avora. This song was submitted in Creole, which is the language of Cape Verde. When it came time to put the lyrics in the ex exhibit, I asked Glanzer if he would translate it for non-Creole speakers, and so we have the English translation as well. He also submitted the music video for the song, uh, which is performed by Rosa Mestre. In this work and in much of Carl's work, he captures the African influences on the Cape Verdean American experience. And so if you notice the little white dots throughout the piece, they also represent the Contadoge that we saw in Eva Brito's painting earlier. And this was another one of the pieces. I mean, I think I could say this for most of the pieces. We asked the artist to submit photographs if the work was done or a, a good description if the piece hadn't yet been completed. And I'd say for just about every photograph we were sent of a piece, it just didn't do it justice. And so this was the very first piece I got for the show and it's when I realized this is gonna be an amazing show because the, the photograph of this piece just did not do it justice. When we put out the call for artists, we asked each of them to write an artist statement of their Cape Verdean experience and how their piece speaks to the Cape Verdean experience. And so throughout the exhibit, 
on each label, it's almost like you're reading a story about how that piece represents the person's feelings about the Cape Verdean experience or their family's journey here, their experience with immigration, the stories they heard growing up, the nicknames of, of people in the neighborhood they heard. And so one of the things that I really love about this exhibit is as you go through and read the labels and the descriptions of the pieces, they're all a little different, but you sense the same thing throughout each of them. The, and, and that's really what we were trying to get at with the title Cape Verdean Voices. People really speak to the experience um, through their pieces. This case was a late addition to the show. Uh, our friend Carl Cruz, who uh, is very active with the Whaling Museum, had two gold albums uh, of the band Tavares, who um, are a local, they, they're from this area, and they're of Cape Verdean descent. And so Carl loaned us their two gold albums, and Arthur Tavares, uh, better known as Pooch, um, was kind enough to loan us their Grammy that they won in 1979 for the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. This piece titled Imaginings of the Source is by artist Elisa Cabral of Brockton. This was one of the few pieces that was not completed at the time of submission, but she wrote such a beautiful description of her vision for the piece that we accepted it. Uh, we also got to look at some of her other work as samples of her work, um, and so we were very happy to accept this piece. She created this using paint, marker, and colored pencil to achieve that look. This picture is another photograph, the second photograph that we accepted from photographer Frank Pina. This is Judge Layton reading from a family Bible that had been in his family for a hundred years. I believe when I was speaking with Frank about this picture, he said that Judge Layton told him he read from that Bible every day. This photograph of Joachim Porchop Almeida uh, was taken by Frank Pina. It's the third photograph we accepted from uh, this particular photographer. Porkchop is a ship model maker, um, and we have some of his ship models at the New Bedford Whaling Museum. If you listen to Frank tell the story of pork chop, someone asked him what the name meant or where the name came from, to which Frank replied, I don't know. With a lot of us, we get these nicknames and we don't know what they mean or where they came from, but the name sticks and that's what you call the person for the rest of their life. This wonderful copper sculpture was done by artist Anita Pina Robinson. We saw two of her watercolors earlier. Um, uh, this was the first piece she submitted for consideration. This piece is normally uh, hanging at Our Lady of Assumption Church, which is a Cape Verdean parish in New Bedford. And it represents the Ernestina Morrissey, which was a packet ship. So after the whaling industry declined, and Cape Verdeans were no longer coming over on whale ships, a lot of whaling vessels were repurposed into packet ships to bring goods and people back and forth from Cape Verde to the U.S. And so immigration didn't necessarily decline just because whaling did. This piece called Mother's Love Two is by Adelgis Andrade. She submitted two pieces, both which speak to Cape Verdean womanhood and motherhood. This is a second piece by Adelgis Andrade. This piece is called Mother's Two. And again, both of her pieces reflect Cape Verdean womanhood and motherhood. This piece is by the artist Ali D'Souza, who works in digital media. When we 
first started working on this exhibition, we envisioned it as an exhibition of local artists. We didn't advertise uh, very widely. Uh, it was mostly a word of mouth endeavor. Somehow, Ali D'Souza uh, got word of the show in Beverly Hills, uh, California, and called about submitting some pieces to the show because his father, who is from this area in Cape Verdean, uh, passed away recently and he thought that it would be wonderful to be able to be in a show of Cape Verdean artists in honor of his father. This piece is called The Messengers um, and as you can see the work um, speaks to different African descended messengers or freedom fighters throughout time and so he has Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, Emilcar Cabral of Cabo Verde, and Colin Kaepernick. This piece is by artist Ali D'Souza. It's titled Ever Forward. You can see in the image, it's Judge Layton on the left and Malcolm X on the right. Ali works with photographs and layers them digitally until he achieves the desired effect. And so these pieces, uh, the two pieces he submitted, we thought were phenomenal and um, really were unique and, and we thought they absolutely belonged in this exhibition. This is one of three photographs in the exhibition by photographer Ron Barboza. This photograph is titled Batuk Group. Batuk is a traditional dance of Cape Verde and this photograph was taken during the annual Cape Verdean Recognition Parade. This photograph by Ron Barboza is titled, Thank You for Your Service. Uh, in this photograph, he captures Cape Verdean veterans marching. Ron's work often features ver uh, veterans of Cape Verdean descent. This sculpture is actually the only piece in this exhibit that directly relates to whaling, um, which I think is pretty awesome because it means there's so much more to the Cape Verde and American experience in New Bedford than whaling. Um, it's an important part of the story though, and so that's why we felt it really important to include this sculpture by Terencio Lopes of a Cape Verdean whaleman. This photograph by Ron Barboza is titled Against All Odds. In the description for the photo, Ron really tries to capture uh, Judge, Layton, Judge Layton's life, uh, his struggles, his achievements. He was the son of Cape Verdean immigrants, so he was first generation. He did not finish high school, but uh, was self-educated and got himself through college and then law school. And so in the photograph, he's holding a chess piece um, to, to capture um, his philosophy of, of life, but also to reiterate um, something that he said in a biography of him once, where he talked about um, how learning chess, you know, someone teaching him chess was, chess was the best tool he could have gained uh, in his youth. And he learned how to play chess at a local boys and girls club. Working with the artists and putting this show together was truly an amazing experience. In our minds here at the museum, we envisioned the show being a small show of artwork that represented the local Cape Verdean community. And what ended up happening was we got museum quality work, we made connections throughout the Cape Verdean community, we received artwork all the way from California. The night of the opening reception, we had 291 people attend. There was a musical performance, there were two spoken word performances, and uh, just many, many connections were made and there was this feeling of community and family that you rarely experience in an exhibition opening. And so this is something that in the future um, we hope to continue and we hope to have the same type of success and the same level of outreach that we did for this show, which again, we thought was gonna be very small and ended up being very big and having a very big reach. And I'm still hearing when I bump into people on the streets about what an experience they had here. 
and how important it was for them and their families to see themselves represented in this exhibit, not only through Cape Verdean history, which we have in our permanent gallery, but the contemporary Cape Verdean community and their experiences. And so as I continue in my work as the curator of social history, I hope to capture that in many different communities and throughout New Bedford and throughout um, this area.